Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us today for the next episode of the Jason's Take On. Today, we're really excited. We have a special guest with us, Kelly Lucas, over in England, who is the author of The Customer Success Pioneer. Um, so we're really excited to have Kelly here. Um, I actually had the opportunity to facilitate a training session with Kelly um, at SuccessCon London a couple years ago, and we got to know each other, and I was really excited when she came out with the book and agreed to be on the show. So there we are. And as always, I am joined by my co-host, Jason Noble, over in the UK. Good so, afternoon. Good morning, everybody. Kelly, we're really excited to have you here and, and hear more about the, the kind of concept and ideas behind your book. As Jason said, you know, we, we love having guests on here and really excited to having you with us. Oh, thanks for having me, both of you. It's great to be here. Fantastic. So, uh, Kelly, for those of, those who uh, don't know you, which are a few and far between these days, <laughs> um, why don't you go ahead and, and tell us a little bit about yourself and your background, and then we'll jump into a little bit more of your experiences and your book and your thoughts going forward and customer success. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, my background, um, I started in uh, finance, the uh, probably the dullest part of my career so far, but um, it kind of drew me into all of the things that I've done, which have effectively took me into um, IT consultancy, uh, which was really all about relationships and, um, you know, getting repeat business with your um, consulting customers through doing a really good job. Uh, and naturally that kind of, when customer success um, started to become really much more prominent in the UK, uh, that led me into customer success about which I'm incredibly passionate. And I can remember when I finally realized and uncovered what customer success was that uh, I'd found my home. This was my <laughs> professional place to be. Uh, and this is where you know all of my um, experiences and opportunities had been leading to me to yeah. so I'm um, as a lot of people say they're uh, customer success you know passionate customer passionate uh, and for me I think you know we're in a really exciting profession because it's still been mm -hmm. so early days you know whether you're in the US or the UK we're still a really fledgling profession so everybody who is in customer success or exploring customer success we're all pioneers and I think that's a really exciting place to be because we can shape it through all mm -hmm. of the conversations we have um, you know we were talking before we started recording about conferences and meetups and I love the fact that almost everybody in the customer success world is um, is very sharing they're very supportive of each other and we want to shape it together there's none of this competitive edge there's no, none of these barriers and I think that's also an incredibly exciting thing for the world in a, in a larger sense as well. Mm -hmm. That's great. I agree, especially with the sharing piece. I mean, that's why Jason and I started the podcast is our opportunity to help share ideas and give back. We've been so thankful for all the people who've come in, like yourself, who've come and joined us. Um, you know, I was very fortunate in that uh, Kelly let me read an advanced copy of her book to give her some thoughts and feedback. And I really loved it and, and really recommend it to everyone. Um, you. you know, Kelly, can you uh, tell us what actually inspired you to write the book? Because it's, it's not a small undertaking. <laughs> Uh, no, and if I know, knew what I know now, maybe I wouldn't have done it, but uh, <laughs> uh, that's not true. I have other ideas for other books, so um, I would recommend it to anyone and equally say that if I can do it, anyone can do it. So um, if you've got a book in you, um, just go out and do it, persevere. Uh, as my publisher says, done is better than perfect, and if you, um, if you don't put words on the page, then you can't edit it and make it better. Um, I've always, I've always loved books as a kid. I was a voracious reader. Um, I had my own library. I used to lend out books and things. Um, and I always assumed I would be a writer at some point. Admittedly, mm -hmm. I always thought I would I be a fiction. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I always thought I'd be a fiction writer. Um, and just no idea ever really came to fruition and, and really set my, uh, my writing on, on fire. So um, a few years back, I suddenly thought I should, I should twist that saying that you know they say you should write about what you know um and from a fiction point of view i always thought about you know the themes through my life the experiences i'd had and i suddenly thought i know customer success you know when i landed in customer success it was because my organization needed a customer success function so i went out and i figured out what needed to be done i went out and found a community and mm -hmm. spearheaded a community and i created customer success at my organization uh, very successfully you know there's there's still got all of the frameworks in place that we put in all those years ago and I thought you know there's a lot of people it's a pioneering you know that's why it's called the mm -hmm. customer success pioneer because we're all pioneering in this space um, and there's a lot of pioneers out there and we should all come together and I'm sharing my experience of what it feels like to 
to implement your own customer success team and you know the topics that you need to be thinking about and how they all relate to each other and also you know learning from the fact that we're all in it together it's hard but also a lot of it is common sense and we're all doing the same thing so validation that we are on the right path and that we'll get there eventually and hopefully if we um, you know, there's not a lot, a lot of literature out there about customer success at the moment and the more people that share and they are beginning to there's a, you know a number of books have been published in the last six months which is great um, but the more that we share our learnings and experiences and practical ways to implement customer success and talk to our key stakeholders outside the, the organization you know our customers as well as internally because that's really key um, then the better we'll get at it and the better we can shape um, best practices and, uh, and make it easier for ourselves and for each other. What, what were the biggest learnings you had from writing a book? Because it, it's not a it's not a simple undertaking, is it? And I think like you said earlier on, you, you quite often, it sounds like a good idea, but when you start getting into it and then you're thinking, oh my, what, what have I signed up for? But what what are the learnings that, that for you for you personally? And then what, what kind of learnings would you share with other people that are kind of embarking on that adventure? um so i would say sorry i'm just i'm jotting down some uh, some thoughts that have come to me so that i i try and remember so one thing i will say is that um much like customer success um because it's the first time i'd been through it it felt like a pioneering journey it felt very scary um i felt very vulnerable doing it um because i you know i said that they say you should write about what you know, but when you're putting out something that is absolutely in your professional line, um, you're putting your reputation on the line. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's all very well people saying that, um, you know, there's all of us in the community, we've all got our experience, we've all got our valid ex um, uh, experiences to share with each other. But if you put it down on paper and everybody looks at it and goes, well, this is rubbish. Um, you know, I felt like a lot of the time like I, I might be shooting myself in the foot. So it was it was very I would say get get your people, the people who are on your side. So I had Sue Nabet Moore, uh, Jason uh, Whitehead uh, and a number of other people who were absolutely cheerleading me, um, you know, desperate to see a copy of the draft, desperate to talk to me about the process. Uh, and because I felt so vulnerable, I didn't show anybody until the very last minute and actually the validation that came from that was such a relief that I probably mm. should have got people involved much earlier, like we would in customer success, right? <laughs> it is writing a book is like working in customer success. All of the things that you would do in customer success, you should apply in, um, in writing a book. You know, you're not alone. Um, you can ask questions. You should go out and talk to people. Um, don't make assumptions about things. You know, go out and mm. ask people, get validation, ask for input, ask for, um, you know, ideas. Um, and also I found particularly writing about customer success because there are so many interrelated um, elements to customer success. I found it quite difficult to write until I had a structure so the DIME framework that I mention in the book, um, which is design, implement, measure and evolve, that came at the very end of the time frame of writing the book. So people say to me, how long did it take you to write the book? And there are many answers to that from writing the first word until finishing the first draft was about a year. But if you condense the amount of time I spent physically writing words, it was probably only a few weeks. But all of the rest of it was internal thinking or drawing out ideas on um, on notepaper um, and getting very confused and tangled about how to deliver the information in a way that would be um, consumable because I kept finding myself meandering off because things were interrelated with each other. So find a structure that you hang your topics off so that you can have a map to follow. Um, that's a, a really key learning for me. Do that, you know, as soon as you can, but also trust that it will come. So it doesn't matter how long it takes you to the right to write the book. Um, yeah, timing. Like, yeah. Yep, go on. This is a bit like customer success, having that structure to hang off so and guide people through. Absolutely. And, you know, and I think you start and my publisher takes you through this process, you know, you start with your table of contents. So I always knew the topics that I wanted to talk about and I always knew where they would sit in the book. Um, 
but this the subtopics topics underneath that you know some of them stretched a number of chapters in the book so how did i how would i um, address that that's the piece that took a lot of doing uh, and a real you know kind of having a, a map of where you're going yeah like you say you know having a, a customer journey having a roadmap yeah. for your product it's all all the business ideas really do translate into writing a book um, and the biggest piece to get over is your vulnerability and fear um, mm -hmm. you know of, of whether it's whether it's going to be good enough particularly if you've got per perfectionism tendencies yeah. um, you know I've got written on my whiteboard done is better than perfect because it's true if you don't get <laughs> if you don't get something out there then you I, never I get love anything it out for, there. for a publisher to say that to you that's just such oh, a yeah. nice it's yeah. incredible isn't it because it is I, I'm I'm a perfectionist I think anyone that knows me will say the same thing and it is very difficult to get that balance yeah I, yeah. I love the title of your book as well I think the word pioneer you've got in there that it almost implies that it's someone that's going to help guide you and direct you. And there is going to be a map. So having that structure, even if you do wander it a bit, I think that that comes with the title, gives you that guidance that it, this is there's something here to follow, yeah. which is really, really cool. Thank you. And, and, and that was, you know, that was my ultimate intention. I remember the first time I, I dared to breathe word that I was thinking of writing a customer success book to a very close friend of mine, actually, and I was still frightened of telling him. And, um, and I said, you know, it's, it's about the 12, you know, the 12 months of, you know, your first year of setting up a customer success team. Um, and he was like, oh my God, it's great. So it's like, you know, um, the dummy's guide to, to customer success. And then what, what, a, what a brilliant, uh, you know, practical application because yeah. there are some theory, you know, books out there. Obviously the Gainsight um, book is, is known very, uh, very well. Um, but what I wanted was much more of a, as you say, a, a guide, something practical. You know, I, I don't give any answers because we're all finding our way and we've all got different organizations and different customers but at least having the 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 topics and some of the activities that you might be able to follow in order to find your way that's what i wanted to get out there and that seems to be the feedback that i'm guessing that i have kind of hit that mark which is which is a huge relief <laughs> how have you found when you said that vulnerability about doing the book to, to start with now that you've published it what, what's it like getting feedback on the book I and mean, is, is um, again you, you kind of put yourself out there when people come back to you good bad or or very good you, you know how, how do you react to the feedback uh it is um it's challenging it's um i'm i'm generally quite a humble person so having having people come up to you and say you know we've read your book and it, we we found it amazing uh, even at my uh, my book celebration event um, I, I can't call it a launch event because I published on October the 25th and I had um, uh, an event to mark the occasion on November the 12th and in that short period of time people at the event came up to me and said I've read your book it has been brilliant I've already started implementing some of the things you've been talking about I've bought copies for all of my C-suite so that they can see what customer success is about and understand you know what we're trying to achieve um, so it is it is eternally gratifying that actually I did something pretty good with the book. Um, you know, it's not just a vanity publishing piece. It is, you know, it's it's making a difference to people. Um, and the really lovely thing, actually, at CSM London um, a couple of weeks ago, I met Marcel properly for the first time at Pulse Europe in November. And a couple of weeks afterwards, he um, he messaged me and said, I've just started reading your book. I'm really loving it. And I think everybody that comes to CSM London should have a copy. So, you know, um, you know, can we, can we buy everyone, you know, 150 delegates, a copy of the book to give in their swag bag. Uh, and for me to have somebody who has been leading customer success yeah. meetups for three years to instantly want to give a copy of my book to everyone that's going to an event that they're organizing. That's, you know, that's peer recognition, yeah. peer validation. Um, it's it's just amazing and of course the vulnerability is still there you know i'm still gonna t i'm still gonna if anybody mentions anything negative i'm gonna i'm still gonna say that that's the that's the biggest piece of feedback i've had but honestly right now i guess i'm really lucky or i'm just not coming into contact with the people that um aren't understanding it or getting it all the feedback has been 100 percent positive and i'm just so grateful for the community for for loving it
Yeah, and, and you are very humble and probably haven't told too many people yet, too, that you've been nominated for an award for the book as well, too. So let's, let's give yourself a crack here. <laughs> <laughs> amazing you, short time. Do you know, I, I was actually going to mention it. I had it in my head, but um, of course I'd forgotten it because it's not important. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I've been, uh, yeah, I'm a finalist for the Business Book Awards for 2020. Uh, so I, I find out next uh, next month and it is in the specialist uh, specialist business book category. Oh, that's, that's incredible to say it's, it's only been out, uh, you know, less than three, four yeah. months. Absolutely yeah. amazing. And your first book, that's great. Yeah, I, yeah, I, t I totally wasn't expecting it. So one of the things I like about your book, too, is how you do focus on the first 12 months, because I think that's an area where, um, you know, many customers, you know, or, or other people in the field, when I talk to them, like, I'm not really sure where to get started. I don't know what to do and what's, where do I go and things like that. Um, what inspired you for that area? And what are sort of the, the biggest pieces of advice you give for someone who's just starting a CS practice? Um, I think uh, the inspiration came from the fact that I did it. Um, you know, so I knew um, I knew the, the challenges that I had and the, the pieces, the, the gaps that I found. Um, so, you know, when I first came into contact with customer success, I'd never heard of it before. Um, there weren't there wasn't a community um, in existence, particularly in the UK um, that there is now. Um, so I had to go out and, and find out. Um, you know, we did get put in touch with some, C, you know, CSMs in Salesforce, for example, because they were the one of the only companies doing it, really. Yeah. Um, and it just felt like I had to work very hard to put the pieces together and to try and figure out whether the ideas I was coming up with were were valid or not. Uh, mm -hmm. And luckily, Michael Blaisdell of CSA, Customer Success Association, he did his first um, UK success con. Um, very shortly after I discovered customer success and I went along to that conference um, and it was just life affirming um, hearing that everybody else in the room was going through the same challenges and that we were applying a lot of the same um, concepts and activities and the greatest value I got from that that, that day was the networking meeting new mm -hmm. people and forming you know the the fledgling European community really that's that's kind of where it started and we we started to create independent meetups and things so for me yeah the inspiration was that I'd been through it um, I felt that hopefully pe that would resonate with people um, you know as Dan Steinman said in my endorsement he's you know he's pleased that somebody like me has written the book because it has come from somebody who has been you know been in the trenches rolled up their sleeves um, got their hands dirty and has, has come out with the learnings and the, and the, and the scars and the successes <laughs> and the joy and the passion um so that's why I, why i did it and advice for people who are in the same position i was those years all those years ago um would be to it, and it, it's it's the dime framework for me and the fact that you can use that on a micro and a macro level so um try and um, prioritize and focus on the pieces um that are most important for you right now don't try and do everything all in one go, because if you do that, it will become a tangled mess. Um, mm -hmm. But identify the things that are at highest priority for you. Go through the design, implement, measure, evolve cycle, um, you know, get it bedded in and then move on to the next piece. The other couple of things that are really important are make sure you work out at least some of your process as soon as possible, um, because without process, you can't identify who can help you with which pieces of the puzzle because my final piece of advice is that as a customer success professional, particularly if you're the first person in the organization who has been given that title, um, everyone will assume that you are solely responsible for the customer and they will try and throw everything in your direction. Mm -hmm. And that is not the way to instill a culture of customer focus. Every person in the organization has their role to play. You are the coordinator and the facilitator yeah. of the customer success program. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have, you know, an idea of what your framework and process is, you can then tell, you know, the account manager where the account managers where they they play their part, where marketing plays their part, where customer support plays their part, where product plays their part, and also the value that you can bring to them in each of their roles as well. So, yeah, those are the things that I would think about. I I love that 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 idea of as customer success as the facilitators because it's something I. Jason and I have spoken about it before and, and I've seen it in multiple organizations and it is that bringing together all the right people to help the customer and you, you're not. It is a lot of organizations now think when they 
put someone in the position with customer success in the title, that's it done. Just yeah, put absolutely. it over one corner. And it's, it's, there's a huge piece around. It doesn't work like that. You've got to have the culture. It's got to have that organizational way of working. It's got to have that kind of C-level sponsorship, but also for your customers to understand it. And I think yeah. there are so many, there are so many challenges. And I, I love the way you've spoken about it because we, we've, all, we've all been there. We all are still there. Yes. No one's figured out this yet. This is this is one one journey, one map, but a phenomenal one to take people. The, yes. One of the, some of the things that Jason and I have spoke about in some recent podcasts that we've done are kind of some of the challenges that we see coming into 2020. You know, everyone thinks about 2020 as this big bold vision. It's 2020. What what do you see as some of the big challenges for the whole customer success industry profession in in this year and going forward? Some of the biggest challenges. Um, I, th- I think the biggest one is is the is this understanding that it is a culture and not just a team. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I, was t- I was actually you reminded me I was talking to somebody earlier today, uh, and it, it it kind of sums up what you were saying there is you know they were we were talking about customer success and she said um, oh you know in the whole of our organisation we've got one person who is responsible for our customers. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I have a huge issue with everything that you've just said yep, there because that, <laughs> that's the whole problem. <laughs> you know, there's, there's one person and you have said they are wholly responsible for the customer. And well, what does everyone else in the organization do? <laughs> I, I know. And, you know, so, so what, none of you talk to customers, none, yep. none of you think about customers, yep. none of you yep. understand that if your customers aren't successful, then, you know, sooner or later, you're going to be out of a job. So, I did. I, what is oh? What is wrong with it? So that that's the biggest challenge yeah. is that I'm. I know that those of us who are passionate about customer success just inherently get that if you motivate people and you fulfil people and you make people successful, that inherently grows your own success. It will just shine back on you through advocacy and referrals and joy and happiness and positive yep. support. Um, I get that that you know if you inherently understand it, it's it feels like a no brainer. But I also think, you know, VCs get it and they're all about money um, and they won't invest in organizations, startups, unless they're committed and are absolutely investing in customer success. And yet there are so many, um, you know, C-suite executives who don't understand the the customer success success imperative there are people who are implementing it because they've been told Mm -hmm. they have to but don't you know if they put that one person they're responsible for customer success so we've ticked that box we don't need to worry about it anymore (laughs) it's going to be fine Um, there are people who you know just don't think it's worth it so don't even go that far Um, and just even if they have invested in it unless they can really um, you know, they, they still ultimately still believe in the legacy way of doing business that if you throw money at sales, that's going to make you profitable. And if you um, try and divert that money elsewhere, it's going to be a really big problem. So I think we need to do a better job of demonstrating value in a way that the people who aren't like us can really understand and it resonates with them. Um, and that's that's the key challenge. We you know we've started talking more about metrics. We talk about comparing the cost of acquiring a customer versus the cost of retaining a customer because it is understood that if you're doing it well, the cost of retaining a customer is much lower, and you've got all of the you know the wider impacts of the fact that your customer portfolio, if you're delighting your customers, they become your virtual sales team. You don't have to pay them to do the advocacy and the referrals and and selling you to their peer network whenever they're networking. That's that's the beauty of customer success and the low cost of customer success. And we just need to find a way of really articulating that and telling the story to the the types of management who don't inherently understand the beauty of customer success so that's the biggest challenge that i see but i'm also really excited about that i think if we can crack that i think the future of the business world could be very exciting and very beautiful i love i love the way i think you're probably the first person i've heard say the beauty of customer success (laughs) but it's but it's a brilliant terminology it's a brilliant way to think about it because it is i think when it's when, when we get it right, when it's done right, the, the impact on everybody is yes. phenomenal. And I, I loved earlier on when you, you're talking about it. It isn't, it, you kind of, your approach to customer success also applies to your approach to writing the book. I think a lot of the principles apply to a lot of other things, yes. not just customer success, which is such a nice place to be. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I think that's also why I ended up, 
I don't know why it didn't come to me sooner, but that, that dime framework, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's like project management. Yep. Jason, you and I have uh, talked about this, um, you know, about customer success. I look at it as, you know, program management, project management, because you are, you know, everything that you do in life, you are designing in some way, you know, whether you're thinking about it informally, you are designing and researching what you're going to do. You then take action. So you implement it and then you have to figure out whether it worked and whether you're getting the desired results. So that's measuring it. And then you want to go on to the next step. Step You want to stretch yourself, you want to develop. And that's the evolve step. So it makes sense that, you know, we, we take into account and remind ourselves that we need to be deliberate about it and proactive about it and make sure that we're we've put the right objectives in place and we're, we're achieving those right objectives. Right. Um, yeah. So we, you know, one of the things that we try to focus on in our podcast too, is sort of what bold actions do you, do you think people or companies should take here? So we always like, you know, you've already put yourself out there, which I think is fantastic for this <laughs> book and, and you're getting great feedback. Um, so, so two questions to that, I guess the first yeah. one is in 2020, um, what bold action would you like to see companies take as it relates to customer success in their organizations? Um, companies, bold action, I would like them to take the leap of faith. I would like them to understand that, you know, the business world, we've, 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 we've really, um, I'm, f I'm trying to figure out ways to storytell this and to articulate this. So bear with me because it might sound a bit crazy <laughs> today, but, um, you know, I think the world at, at large has, we've, we've moved in the direction of extreme capitalism and it is unhealthy. It's creating all this anger and hatred and divisiveness um, and selfishness. And I think if business can take a leap of, leap of faith that, which, which is based on in, in inherent knowledge, you know, businesses are made up of individuals. Individuals mm. are people. People need connection. They need to be motivated. They need to feel fulfilled. Uh, and if you concentrate on the individuals and the people, which is inside your organization, but also outside your organization, so your customers, then you're, they're going to want to do better. They're going to want to achieve more. They're going to want to you know, meet your objectives because they feel appreciated. And if we could do that in a really... I'm going to use the word beautiful again, if we can do that in a really beautiful way, because I, I know that there are, there's a lot of talk about it and there's a lot of programs in organizations, but like customer success, I think a lot of C-suite executives are putting these programs in place because they feel they have to, and because it's being talked about and because it's a tick box exercise. Yep. If people really did it in a very natural way and a very open, transparent and invested way committed to real um you know motivation and fulfillment mm -hmm. and people uh, you know the support and development of people i think we would do much better business generally and i think my bold vision is if we can drive the business world or encourage the business world in that way we can stop people being so selfish and people will become more selfless and the world will be a much better place. We can start tackling some of the social change issues that we have as well, just by virtue of the fact that people are in a much better mind space and more open and selfless. Because at the moment we're all kind of, you know, that mental health issues are, you know, uh, we've got an epidemic of mental health issues because people feel so stressed and anxious and overworked and underappreciated. And if we really worked on that in a really open way and in a really deliberate way, I think we could, um, you know, as a business, rather than business being the root of all evil, I think the business can be the start of something really amazing in the world. That's great. Wow. It, so then following on to that, because I think that's a, a really, uh, you know, inspirational <laughs> answer and I like it because I, I hear very few people talk so passionately about business these days. It's really refreshing. Um, bring that down to the individual level. What bold action would you like to see individual CSMs making when they're working with their customers? How, what should they be doing differently to help customers achieve something more than they can achieve on their own right now? Um, be... Be more open to asking questions. I think, again, 
because we are in many people i think there are you know there are organizations who are doing it well but i think um many people don't feel supported and they feel that they have targets to reach and they have too too many customers in their portfolio and all of the responsibility lays on their shoulders um and they've been told to you know make sure their customers are happy and that their customers will you know renew and grow um and rather than having valuable conversations with their customers where they're really getting to the root of challenges mm -hmm. you know they are they're, they're still being reactive you know customer success ought to be proactive we ought to be working in partnership we should be you know consultative we should be trusted advisors and that you know if you've set that up from the beginning so i guess i guess that's the first bold step is make sure you set it up right from the beginning um, and if you haven't then go in and do it now go into your customers and frame your relationship. It is a partnership. You are not their servant. You are not their whipping dog. You are there to work together to understand what your customers' outcomes are, what that will look like and how it will be measured and whose responsibility it is to get that data. Some of it will be their responsibility. Some of it will be your responsibility. And if you put that relationship on the right foot to begin with or reframe it now, then that gives you the um, the ability to really ask questions and really dig into what um, what the root of something might be because quite often I, I got asked the other day you know what would you do if a customer came up to you and said I need this button to be blue it doesn't work for, to, for me because it's green um, I'm like well clearly that's not the issue they're having there must be something <laughs> underneath that so and a lot of CSMs I think in this day uh, you know at this stage of the maturity of the profession are oh my god I need to go back to product and tell them the color needs to change because I just have to take whatever the customer is giving me and I have to go and panic about it so mm -hmm. be very deliberate about your conversations with your customer make sure that you ask the difficult questions um, and if they are being challenging with you you know take them back to that that framing you've done you know I'm not your you know I'm, I'm not here as your your slave or your whipping dog mm -hmm. I'm here as an equal and and we need to have a balanced relationship we said this is what we we're going to achieve if we're not working if that's not working in some way then let's replan let's figure out how we can move forward and make the best of it so be bold with your customers make sure they know it's a partnership and um you know and not a one-way street it is that that approach is often very difficult to get right isn't it because people mm -hmm. do still thinking that old kind of mentality that that you're my customer anything you want i do yes. and, and i i'm a firm believer that the customer's always right but you help guide them on on what right is and, and what the right yes. is, is it is <laughs> yes it, it is it is about partnerships and it really is yeah. that's even the term partnership is something that i'm i'm really encouraged that we're seeing it be used more and more in what traditionally were supplier relationships it's now about partnerships absolutely it has to be about a partnership because you know we're, we're all we're all into it goes back to that um statement i made earlier you know we're all individuals we're all people yeah. you know you might you might think you're working um, business to business but actually there's one individual talking to another individual and if you get on together you know if you create that rapport and that relationship and that ability I mean, it doesn't mean you have to be best friends but creating a rapport means that you can talk to each other you can be open with each other and you can really understand what's happening in the background for both of you um, and make sure that you get the most success for each each business I, I love that. I mean, this, this has been such a great conversation because it is, it's about human relationships. It's about trust. Yes. It, all, all of these things that apply, not just in business, that, but in relationships it, for everybody anywhere. Absolutely. And that is why I'm so, so <laughs> sure that if we can make customer success stick in business and be you know we, we talk about the fact that it's a business imperative but i really believe it is a business imperative yeah. because if we can make it stick i think it will make it will help every company achieve its full potential yep. but it will also help individuals achieve their full potential and the world achieve its full potential and i'm really excited about that if i can just figure out how to make it work <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. no I, that's so true it, it's the you know the, the hallmark of customer success too is that um shared opportunity to create success for everyone and, and yeah. there's yes. more than enough success to go around for the world which is absolutely great. yes that exactly that jason <laughs> wow well kelly thank you so much for being here we really appreciate your insights and really excited about the book um before we go and obviously we'll put links to your site in the book in, in the description um 
when we post this podcast out as well too. But please give us a shameless plug for where people can find your book and the title and anything else you want to add. Uh, the book is called The Customer Success Pioneer. Uh, it is in all good online uh, bookshops, so Amazon, Waterstones. Um, and I'm, I'm really thrilled by the feedback I've had with it from it. So I really hope that everyone enjoys it and gets some value from it. Great. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you so much. We're really yeah. excited and look forward to uh, hearing more in the future. So please come back again too. Thanks oh, so much, I, Kelly. Really, really fan- phenomenal conversation, this. Thank you. I've had an absolute blast and I'd love to come back. So great to see you both. Great. Thank you. Thank you.